Welcome to this Windows channel and this is another little quick review of a build of Windows 10. So this is the second build of the Creators Update. Uh, build 14.965 was released today, November the 9th. At uh, around 2 p.m. this afternoon, I installed it as soon as I got it and used it all day. And basically um, been checking out, making sure that it's stable and pretty uh, good. So the install went very well. Usual install of 45 to 50 minutes. Pretty standard for this uh, old um, Core i3 PC. And of course, as a bottom right, you see here, evaluation copy build 14965 of this new update. So... This is another build. Uh, it's pretty stable. It seems to work well. And, um, you know, pretty much everything I've done, I've gone on the internet, I've done a lot of things. It works great. So what's new in this build? Well, first of all, one of the new thing is controlling an external monitor from tablets just got easier. So now when you have a tablet and you actually uh, have an external monitor, um, one of the problems that sometimes um, people had was driving content on the second display uh, with a tablet, but you don't have a mouse or a touchpad attached. So here I can't show you because I don't have a tablet to display the information. But to give you an idea, on the bottom right of your screen, there appears a black uh, square when you actually transfer to a second screen. That now transfers as basically a touchpad on the screen. So that means that now you'll be able to press an old, uh, the taskbar show touchpad button. So here you see it, uh, if I uh, right click, you see show touchpad button. Now that doesn't work because this is not a tablet computer, but you will have a pad that appears and that does help you work better with a second screen using um, your tablet and basically a touchpad that is on the screen of your tablet that enables you to work better in Windows 10. So that's not a bad idea actually. You've got sticky note updates. So now sticky notes are a little more intelligent because they have integrated with Cortana now. So when you enter an address, when you enter something, it actually can for example, on a uh, address of somebody that you, you know, suppose you have a client and you take a sticky note and you just, okay, I have to meet him at this place. Well, you put the address and of course, Cortana now can actually show you on a map, for example, where it is. Or say that you want to, um, you know, write uh, a email and uh, you continue taking notes and so on. Well, that email right here, look at here, you have send email. You can actually click here and what's going to happen is that it's going to open your mail client in order for you to be able to send an email uh, with email address that you see here. So whatever you want to do, it will ask you what you want to choose as a mail client or not. So you can choose mail, for example, say OK. And here we go we now will be sending out an email with this client. So there are a lot of little things here that are nice. Um, so they also um, have expanded the number of languages that Cortana can understand within the sticky notes, which is also pretty cool. Uh, they've added recognition of phone numbers and also all sorts of uh, German, English, Spanish, French and Italian locales. So it's pretty interesting for that. Also, um, <clears throat> basically, the uh, sticky notes, when you first start them, they will um, basically ask you, uh, do you want to enable insights? So basically, that's how you enable the insights in this uh, sticky notes. So um, at the first time that you run it, it's going to say, oh, do you want to run insights and have Cortana be able to, uh, you know, think about or help you with what's happening and of course that will work. They also fixed some issues with uh, the undo and redo and sticky notes, uh, improved performance of text input and it's easier now to uh, get the latest sticky notes 
app updates. So a uh, nice uh, polishing of the UI, you know, uh, even the icon, if you look at sticky notes, kind of a little more interesting than it was before. So uh, I think that will, uh, will be a pretty, uh, pretty sight uh, for sticky notes. And uh, depending on what you do, you see here, you got the settings icon, enable insights as you see here. And of course, I have statistics in order to uh, Microsoft to get you know, information about what's working or not. They've also improved the workspace, the ink workspace. So the famous ink uh, workspace is getting better and better all the time. It's getting more um, you know, of the different uh, access of pen settings and also access with the different apps that you are going to share with. Uh, the new protractor that you can uh, uh, use is uh, different. A lot of people have been complaining, for example, the protractor was not working well and people were kind of going a little crazy. Now, the, um, if you have a uh, little wheel on your mouse, you can actually uh, use the wheel on your mouse to uh, enable the, um, the protractor. Uh, that didn't work, so I all sorts of little thing. You can shrink and expand it. Uh, fixed issues where sticky notes and the Windows Ink workspace would not work. They fixed an issue with the inking and resizing of the protractor that sometimes resulted in the crash of the sketchpad. And they updated the pen and Windows Ink settings for pen users. Now uh, you can include a link to handwriting training tools and stuff like that. So they've, you know, they're slowly building new tools and new uh, interesting stuff in here. Also, they've uh, done a few um, improvements in the registry editor. One of the cool things of the registry editor with the anniversary update is the fact that, for example, if I go, I say I go to local machine, I go to software, I go to Microsoft, then I want to find in here the, uh, uh, in the Microsoft site, um, anything. Let's go to Internet Explorer. And now I'm here, but you know, you can't see here on the left side exactly where you are without scrolling. It's sometimes a pain in the butt. But you know what? Uh, now, with the address on the top, because you see it's here, and if you remember that you have Control L that sets focus to the bar, here it is. You have the um, path that you have gone into the registry editor, which is pretty cool. Also, they've changed a few things. If you actually want to um, use uh, a, a, a copy a pad, for example, and when you're sharing it with somebody. Now, you see here it says, you know, computer, H key, local machine, software, and so on. But, you know, a lot of us that use the registry regularly don't need to have the full name of H key local machine. We know that we can use, uh, use H key LM, which we know what is. So H key CR, H key CU, or H key LM, we know which one it is. So when you share, it actually will uh, lower or diminish this um, H key local machine to H key LM, so people will know what it is, uh, and, um, and and you know it's going to be smaller to share. Little things like this that are interesting, but this is a real, real nice thing that should have been in the uh, register editor in a, you know a long time ago. And more improving of the iProv virtual machine experience. So uh, the new scaling options mentioned last build fixed issues depending on the zoom level and stuff like that that didn't work well. Now this build works fantastically well. As I've said, it's updated great. But as all builds, there are fixes and issues in here. So what are the fixes and what are the known issues right now? Um, and you know, one of the things that's interesting to, to note because somebody told me, well, you know, every time you tell us two or three things that aren't working right, but when you actually talk about a new build, you say they fix much more than just what's not working right. And that's the thing with builds. It's that the things that we actually know don't work well are just the basics that we already, you know, Microsoft already knows. But as we are using 
the builds, of course, there's a lot more that people will report in bugs. So what's fixed from the last one? Fixed issues where Internet Explorer was crashing, crashing a few seconds after launch. That one we knew about. Fixed issue where Cortana in French, France or Canada, um, take a picture, video or selfie when you were saying or prendre une command was redirected to a Bing search rather than opening the camera app. They made some graphics improvements so the system will now respond better to the Windows L um, command when pressed while playing a full screen game. Uh, updated the Alt F4 shutdown dialog to better respond to the DPI changes with external monitors. They fixed an issue where File Explorer might crash when creating or renaming a folder on a network share. Fixed an issue resulting on text from the Outlook calendar tile on the start menu being slightly fuzzy. Fixed an issue where deleted files might reappear in File Explorer with a zero byte size. Fixed an issue resulting in a Windows default lock screen window sometimes appearing after login. Fixed an issue for File Explorer crashing after right clicking an app in the task manager and selecting open file location. They fixed uh, also they've updated the migration logic so that going forward from build 14965 all your user account control settings, startup shortcuts and file explorer folders that have been pinned to the start menu will now be preserved across upgrades. Fixed an issue resulting in vertical lists written in XAML such as uh, those found in Groove Music unexpectedly animating in from the side. Fixed issue resulting in Cortana crashing if you type create an appointment. Fixed an issue with Microsoft Edge after canceling a file download. The progress bar for the next file downloaded might appear to be stuck at the point where it was uh, on the old file. And they fixed issues with um, input method editor um, periodically showing the candidate window in the upper left corner of the desktop not being able to enter text into Office 2016 apps. What are the known issues here? Two things. Double clicking on an Excel document to open it from the File Explorer will crash Microsoft Excel. So the workaround is to open the document within Excel. Let's try it. I got Excel here. I'm just curious to see if uh, we'll be able to recreate this. So let's uh, open an Excel sheet and uh, just try it. You know, it sometimes doesn't happen on all builds, but uh, let's try it out and see if an Excel sheet will crash here. So uh, let's put a value here. Here we go. I'm going to file and I'm going to save as on the desktop. And uh, here we go, desktop, this PC, uh, test, and we'll save. And uh, here we go. So now I've created something uh, that uh, is, I think it was on documents that I've just done this, I believe. Uh, you know, that's when you're not looking exactly what you're doing. Yeah, test is here, double click. And my Excel, it opening. So I don't know why. This one, for some reason, uh, from the File Explorer will crash Microsoft Excel. This one seems to work for me. I don't know why it's crashing. Uh, for some people, it seems that it's crashing. And Microsoft Studios game like uh, Sudoku, Jigsaw, Minesweeper, Tab Tiles, and Treasure Hunt may freeze at the splash screen on launch. So if you have any of these installed, I don't know if I had one. If I had one, it was Jigsaw, maybe, yeah. Magic Jigsaw Buzzle. Let's just try it out here. I don't know if it's uh, crashing or not. Yes, it might. It's kind of longer than it should be. This is usually not stuck here. So this, oh, it is maybe going forward. I don't know. Uh, but uh, it's much longer than usual, I can tell you that. Uh, yeah. It is stuck here. So basically, it's not working. So... It is one of those stuck apps, uh, for sure. So, uh, and of course, there are um, <clears throat> nothing major right now, but, uh, you know, you can check it out. And remember to check the Feedback Hub. That's where you can enter uh, and, you know, talk about
problems you might have, things that are going wrong, things that should be better or not. So this is an important thing to check for. And don't forget that there are some really cool um, activities. There are, it's the bug bash for November. You can try out different things. So here, for example, add support for different language. And you click and it's gonna tell you what you need to do and you will just try to do all of these things and click done when it's finished. And of course, as you see here, I've three completed quests for now for November. And uh, these are made to have you working around your insider preview and make sure that it's working right. So why not try it out? The bug bash is a good thing. And you know what? We know that some people that actually are completing quests uh, sometimes receive freebies. So who knows? Maybe you could get some little freebies from Microsoft. So this was the uh, build 14.965, working great, uh, no crashes. Of course, I want to know what you uh, have, or do you have problems? Is something wrong? Uh, is the install going well? If you're an insider, please share your own comments with me uh, of what's right, what's wrong, and um, you know what you found maybe that could be a problem or not, and what you think of this build. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe to my channel. You'll be informed when new videos are online. Give us a thumbs up. And by subscribing, you'll know when new videos are online. I hope you enjoy our little reviews of the latest builds. And thank you for watching.